Hello and welcome to yet another pseudoscience expose by Pale Blue Thoughts. Recently, the media was abuzz with the news that a certain Hira Ratan Manik passed away in Calicut, Kerala. Media reports cited that this man had stopped eating food since 1995. I was intrigued when I saw this news and wondered how this pseudoscientific person had escaped my attention till now. Anyways, I did a detailed search on the internet for this man and was shocked to know the details of how this man survived just by eating the sun. Well, just by consuming solar energy to be more precise. I guess NASA need to know that the sunspots are actually caused by this fraud eating chunks of our sun. More than the pseudoscience he peddled and more than the usual fan following that all of these fakers have, what astonished me was how the media handled this news and how they failed to read into the pseudoscience themselves. Agreed, many media correspondents may not be science enthusiasts, but the lack of scientific temper among the media just amazed me. I think one of the reasons why India has so many pseudoscientific tempered janta is because the media propagates such news without batting an eyelid. Anyways, this video is all about what I found out during my own research into Hira Ratan Manik's life and after death expose of a pseudoscientific man who apparently consumed the sun. Hira Ratan Manik claims not to have eaten any solid food since 1995 and survived only on water and occasional consumption of tea, coffee and buttermilk. There are claims that he has been subjected to tests by various experts including, oh well, NASA. Hira Ratan Manek claims the reason why he has been able to get the special power is from the sun. How? Not by connecting a wire to it, but by looking at the sun. This is called sun gazing and due to the popularity that Hira Ratan Manek bought it, it is also called the HRM phenomenon, HRM being the short form of Hira Ratan Manik. He was mainly inspired from the teachings of Lord Mahavir of Jains who is said to have fasted for a long period. Fasting is very common in Jain spirituality. It is not sufficient for a Jain to simply not eat when fasting. They must also stop wanting to eat. If they continue to desire food, the fast is pointless. Some Jains also practice what is called as a Santara which is a procedure in which a Jain stops eating with the intention of preparing for death. You can read up on the famous case of Kala Devi Hiravat, a 93 year old woman who undertook fasting in the hope of getting Nirvana. Anyways, coming back to our HRM, let us look at some of his unscientific claims. We have a supercomputer in our bodies given to us by the nature, which is our brain. HRM calls it the brain uter. The brain is more powerful than the most advanced supercomputer apparently. Really? Then why this colliver D for artificial intelligence and the fear for technological singularity? Even medical science agrees we hardly make use of the brain but about 5-7%. to The most brilliant of humans like Albert Einstein is reported to have used only about 32% of their brains claim HRM. Well, this is easily debunked with our current knowledge of the human brain and I have done a video on debunking this myth which you can find here or in the description box below to watch once you are done with this video. In order to operate the brain effectively, it needs to be activated. Okay, brain activation mode on. Being a holistic entity, it needs a holistic power supply. Sun energy is a source that powers the brain which can enter and leave the human body or the brain only through one organ that is the human eye. Eyes are the sun's energy's entry door to the human brain. They are also known as the windows of the soul. The eye has many functions other than vision. Like what? And which research? No idea. The eye is the most important part of the human body. Oh my! Please tell that to a visually challenged person or to someone who just suffered a cardiac arrest. Our soul enters into our body through the eye before we are born and sits in the third eye called the pineal gland in the center of the brain. I know you have not been eating Acharam, but please tell me what have you been smoking? The sun's rays enter our eyes and reaches our brain. Hell how? Does this person even know how vision happens? Did nobody teach this mechanical engineer how visible light which gets reflected off objects reaches our retina where it gets converted into signals which get processed by the brain and the photons of light doesn't reach the brain at all? But no, HRM claims that when he looks at the sun, the photons enter the eye 
reach the brain and spreads all over the body and it produces vitamin A. I'm sorry, my pseudoscience detector just burnt hearing that. According to HRM, present day teachings and ideas such as don't look at the sunlight at all, you will damage your eyesight, never go out in the sun as you will get cancer are causing needless hysteria and paranoia. Yeah, right. The more you are away from nature, the more there is a cause for illness and you will automatically support global corporations. Of course, you need to bring in the conspiracy theory to sell your wares, correct? Starting with just gazing at the sun for 10 seconds on the first day, you can gradually increase it in 3 months to 10 to 12 minutes. The circuit inside the brain has to be charged very slowly and at the appropriate time which is 1 hour after sunrise and 1 hour before sunset. In 3 months, one can realize the freedom from mental disturbances and fear, thus achieving perfect balance. In 6 months time, with 20 minutes of sun gazing, one can be free from physical diseases. The rays of the sun with 7 colors have a cure for all diseases. For example, red was a known cure for kidney ailments, green for liver and yellow for heart, according to HRM. This is actually called as chromotherapy or color therapy, yet in the form of alternative medicine, which is nothing short of quackery. All researches done on chromotherapy so far has found no evidence to support a causal link between specific colors to health outcomes. By seven and a half months with 20 to 30 minutes of sun gazing, the energy starts getting stored. And as the level increased by nine months, you don't leave food, food leaves you. Hunger disappears. It is prohibited to gaze at the sun after 9 months and for more than 44 minutes. Your brain tank should now be full of energy and you don't need to eat after that. How simple. Now I wonder why didn't he go to places like Somalia and other places of Africa which are suffering from serious malnutrition. They have the sun right there because it is right on the equator. How much lives could have been saved by just looking at the sun? And not eating. I saw one of his speeches on YouTube where he propagates all his pseudoscience. He even tells a story of how the US prisoners of war during the Korean War were subjected to watching the sun as a means of punishment from sunrise to sunset and their vision instead of deteriorating started improving and they threw away their glasses in the end. Yeah sure they must have thrown away their glasses and instead must have switched on to these. I mean one thing that the sun gazing can improve is your imagination, I think. Because this tale is nothing but a figment of imagination of HRM and there is no historical evidence of the POWs being treated in such a manner during the Korean War. Okay, now let us see some real aspects of the studies that HRM says supports his claims. I went through the official website of HRM called the Solar Healing Center. The first test was conducted in 1995 to 1996 for 211 days in Calicut, which was observed by a Dr. C. K. Ramachandran, a medical expert on allopathy and Ayurvedic medicine. Oh boy, no wonder he was fooled. He was already fooled into believing a pseudoscience like Ayurveda. So what is one more? Next, he was tested by an international team of doctors led by a Dr. Sudhish Shah and K. K. Shah where Manek fasted for 411 days in 2000-2001 under strict observations. Now a quick search on this Dr. Sudhir Shah got me some interesting results. He was the very same person who did similar tests on a person named Prahlad Jani who had claimed that he had not eaten since 1940. Prahlad Jani who had passed away in 2020 had made similar claims as Manek but was tested by Sudhir Shah in 2003 and 2010 and the results came out on the media and never appeared on any scientific journal. End of story. Sanal Edamargu, a well-known skeptic and pseudoscience fighter in Kerala, called this experiment as a farce because they allowed Jani to move out of the CCTV camera's field of view several times from the sealed room. He asked for access to the room and both times he was denied access. This prompted his good friend James Randi, who ran the JRF, to extend his $1 million challenge to Prahlad Jani to prove his supernatural ability, which was never taken up. So for someone who has a history of dabbling in pseudoscience, it is not difficult to support another one. This time, Manix. The other tester, KK Shaw, was a past president of the Indian Medical Association and a chairman of the Jainist Doctors Foundation, a group which aims to promote scientific research and medical education based on the principles of Jainism. Need I say any more? 
when the testers themselves are swimming in pseudoscience would you expect the test results not to have any bias the paper claims that he climbed the satrunjay mountain on the 401st day of his fasting along with 500 fellow men without anybody's help within 1.5 hours neither the experiment as described in the paper nor the paper itself have been validated by any other well-known scientific or medical journal there lies a secret third study lsd lasted for 130 days in philadelphia at the thomas jefferson university and the university of pennsylvania under the direction of dr andrew newberg and dr george c brainerd dr sudhir shah who led the previous study again acted as an advisor and consultant to the u.s team however Dr. Andrew Newberg said that Hira stayed at the University of Pennsylvania only for brain scans on studies of meditation, not for his ability to fast indefinitely. Following the statement, Newberg denied ever undertaking the 130-day study. Another bogus claim. Next was the claim that NASA had invited him to the US so that they could conduct studies on him. You know NASA? Yeah, that very organization that conducts tests like these during their break times to help them send people into outer space. Boy, I am sure the astrophysicist might be treating these kind of tests as a cool hobby in between trying to rival the mysteries of the universe. I mean, how long can one sit and stare into a telescope or look into a computer simulations? I am sure this is their kind of entertainment. Anyways. NASA denied the claim and said that they had not invited HRM anywhere near their center for anything whatsoever. Another claim bites the dust. Now the biggest expose for HRM came through a director named Peter Sorcha. Peter who was intrigued by this claim by HRM decided to film him secretly when he was in the US. He was finally caught while eating at an Indian restaurant in San Francisco by his accomplice who captured everything in his camera. Later Peter visited the restaurant and the staff there showed him what HRM ate. When confronted by Peter, HRM initially claimed that he went to the restaurant as he was offered $100 by someone to pretend to eat. Why? No idea. A person who refused to eat for a billion dollars was swayed by the lure of a hundred. Imagine. Peter made a documentary called Eat the Sun where he exposed the claims of Hiraratan Manik. This documentary was aired on the Discovery Channel. Although I was unable to find the entire documentary, I was able to find the crucial part which I am presenting here. But you're telling people that you don't eat and you haven't eaten in 10 years? Is that true? Yeah, it's true and I have been investigated by medical experts several times. 211 days they examined me only on water. Then the 21 doctors international team chaired by Indian Medical Association president examined me 411 days only on water. Then later 130 days fast I did in United States where I was investigated by doctors and scientists of two universities in Pennsylvania that is Thomas Jefferson and UPenn. And so when a person who can remain for 411 days continuously on water, then uh, that is, these are the proofs that I am having. And I, uh, I also say that occasionally I do take tea or coffee or buttermilk uh, in addition to water, but no solid foods at all. Did you have lunch today at an Indian restaurant? No, no. Somebody took me for photographs. They paid me hundred dollars. To what? Have lunch? Yes, to no, to take different poses in the Indian restaurant. Somebody somewhere on the road and everywhere. You're saying that they paid you to take those photographs? Yeah. They said they want some photos of me. Eating. Oh, they pretend to eat like that. Why? I don't know. I don't understand why you'd want to be with food if you're telling everyone that you don't eat. Also, definitely I don't eat. It's definite that I don't eat. I do take tea, coffee and buttermilk. You're telling me you don't eat? No, I never eat. And I've never eaten even today. It is only because they wanted me. Alright. 
Can you show me the photographs? Actually, he just came in at 11.30 and ate all the food. What did he eat? He started eating that one and of course rice. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one and this one right here. They paid me. That's what I am telling you. Now that hundred dollars they paid me. Can I see the hundred dollars? Yeah, it's in there. My poor that that my bag. As you saw, HRM later apologized to Peter Scotcher after being caught red-handed and sent him emails with apologies which were shown in the documentary. But this video did not reach millions like his other videos where he peddled his pseudoscience. Isn't that how things work? If you speak pseudoscience, you get millions of views. If you speak the actual truth, hardly a few would watch it. My channel itself is a prime example for it. Anyways. Buoyed by the fact that the documentary did not reach too many people, HRM continued to peddle his pseudoscience trade until his battery ran out of charge a few days ago. So why do people do this and what is the science behind this? The phenomena is called Inadia or Breatharianism, the claimed ability for a person to live without consuming food and in some cases water. It is a deadly pseudoscience and several believers of these practices have died from starvation or dehydration. I mean. Only those ones who took it seriously, not the fraud ones like Prahlad Jali and Hira Manik who sneaked away to fill their stomach from time to time. Breatharians claim that food and sometimes water is not necessary for survival and that humans can be sustained solely by prana, the vital life force in Ayurveda. As per the pseudoscientific text, sunlight is one of the main sources of prana and some practitioners believe that it is possible for a person to survive on sunlight alone. Documented studies on the physiological effects of food restriction clearly show that fasting for extended periods leads to starvation, dehydration and eventual death. In the absence of food intake, the body normally burns its own reserves of glycogen, body fat and muscle. The claim that fasting enhances brain function is just a myth as one of the brain's main energy source is glucose, something which is not received while fasting. Of course. HRM is not alone in the pseudoscientific world. There are others like Ram Bahadur Bomjon, known as the Bhakji, a Nepalese monk who was approached by Discovery Channel in 2006 to film his fast continuously for 96 hours but was prevented from filming him for that period of time. Just Mohin, an Australian who claimed she lived on approximately 300 calories per day for 14 years but couldn't last for 3 days when put under a test. Wiley Brooks, an American who fasts and breaks it by eating cheeseburgers and coke, claiming that they have 5D properties and are very own Prahlad Jani and HRM to name a few. Now why did they do this video when a person has died? Well, I didn't know about this person until he died and the media propagated his pseudoscience. I am going to blame the media for helping promote pseudoscience in this country. If only they did some research on this, they would have found out the truth, just like I did. It doesn't take long in this information era and yet they don't bother and go behind pseudoscience to market their content. What they don't realize is the harm that it causes to the current generation and to the generation that is growing up and yet to be born. These stories would get passed down like Chinese whisper and kids of an upcoming generation would grow up believing that there was once a man who lived just off the sun's energy and have the same thoughts that many of us have, a false picture of the yesteryears. A rosy retrospection, the false thinking that things were better in the past. And before I end, I would like to point out that according to actual experts, looking at the sun can damage your eyes in the long run and does not improve your vision or make you lose those glasses. So does fasting, it harms your body instead of detoxifying it. So please do not attempt the HRM phenomenon at home, ever. And the brain is also not a high voltage power supply which stores energy which it receives from the sun. But you know that, don't you? Don't you? The essence of pale blue thoughts is to try and eradicate pseudoscience wherever and whenever I get to hear about it and I shall continue to do so. I want to leave a legacy of facts and not pseudoscientific viewpoints and I shall continue to do so in the coming episodes. I do hope you like this one. Please do comment and let me know. If you want to watch similar scientific videos, please subscribe to this channel. I would be back with more scientific and debunking pseudoscience content. Until then, it's bye bye from pale blue thoughts.